So it's Easter and you're probably thinking that that uh, thumbnail, 100 seconds was a big April Fool's joke. Well, it's not. I actually took that out here with my equipment. I'll list in the description below what I used. But the point I was trying to make with that photo is that you come out to the country like here, you have a good camera with a back illuminated sensor or even like the newer stack sensors. And what you can do in like less than two minutes it is insane. Obviously, I went and further imaged uh, using my camera equipment and all that stuff because I'm already out here in my observatory and took an even better photo. But my point here is that for 100 seconds out here in like Bortle 2 uh, skies, what you're able to accomplish is insane. It's insane. So as things get better in the world, one of the things you should definitely plan is a astro trip like a day trip or a weekend trip, come on out. Uh, I'm gonna pop over to the dark sky viewing area in Lennox and Edmonton in just a second to show you absolutely pristine dark skies. Now, I'm just gonna do a little walking on the site to give you an idea. I'm coming off the highway, so it's not very far off the highway, which has some advantages and disadvantages. You're not actually driving off into the middle of deep dark nowhere. But at the same time, you do occasionally have the odd car come by. So, at the Lennox and Addington dark sky viewing area, my suggestion is not to do longer than five minute exposures. That way if a car goes by and the light gets into your imagery, if you happen to be imaging over the highway, it's not a huge loss. So in today's video, I'm actually out here at the Lennox and Addington dark sky viewing area. It's basically the most southern dark sky site in Ontario that's possible where you're going to end up with basically Bortle 1 skies. It's just north of Napanee, Ontario, and it's about a two, two and a half hour drive from Toronto or Montreal. Eight rings out here, and we can also have it where people have set up off the pad itself. That is allowed as long as you sort of stay on the rocks and you don't disturb any of the greenery. And that allows you to have probably about 12 to 15 telescopes out here at any one night. And be it that it is remote, I've actually been out here on some busy nights, and I can tell you that this definitely gets filled up, but there's never, a time you can come out here and you feel like you don't have room. Uh, unless, of course, there's a comet coming out, in which case everybody and their grandmother is out here. <laughs> that was a bit of a crazy night. Another big advantage to having a dark sky site like this, if you're coming out here, is that generally there's always somebody here when it's clear skies and there's no moon. So you're not out here by yourself, out in the middle of wilderness, thinking, oh no, I hope a bear doesn't get me. <laughs> I don't really think a bear is going to get you anyway, but you have several people here. There's a parking lot you can run to, make noise, etc. You're not like you're alone out here in the woods, which is great because you don't have any lights and light pollution. But at the same time, you're out here with other astrophotographers or astronomers, and that's a good thing. So chances are there is a dark sky viewing area near you. Might need a little bit of driving time to get to it but it's definitely, definitely going to be worth it in terms of astrophotography and additionally astronomy. To help you with that, I will put some links below to some resources that will help you find those locations. While you're scrolling down, please give the video a like because that helps the algorithm basically say this is a good video. And if you want to see more astronomy related content, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. One of the things I like about this particular location here in Lennox and Addington is that they actually have event nights on the weekends around a new moon. Now, depending on the time of the year and what phase the moon is in, it's going to either be visually based where they're basically going to have no white light in this area and you're going to basically get a tour of the night sky by a serious amateur astronomer. Or if there's a little bit of moon, you're going to have astrophotography nights. Generally, I think that's usually the weekend before or after the visual where the night sky is not necessarily as dark until later in the evening, but astrophotographers can come out here, set up all their gear and do a lot of imagery. And while obviously having white light is really bad, they're not gonna like shoot you on the spot for it because everyone here has got computers and all the electronic gizmos that they're watching on their screens. Night vision is not exactly the number one priority when they're out here. So something to keep in mind and definitely check and in any other night of the week, etc. If it's clear, you could be out here and be imaging. You don't have to be a part of any club to do this. You just have to come out here and enjoy the night sky. 
Now, there are two things that you have to consider if you're coming out to a dark sky site. Number one is that the weather is never 100% guaranteed anywhere. So you could drive all the way out here and there could be clouds. Generally check the forecast before you come, but it can happen. Number two is that if you forget something, and this is incredibly important, make sure all your astronomy gear is in a box before you come out here, because if you forget something, you're out of luck. There isn't like a hardware store around the corner that you could go and pick up astronomy gear. So the next time you're thinking, what can I do to improve my astronomy? Consider checking out a local map, maybe your astronomy group, find out where all the astronomers hide out, where it's a little bit lower light pollution than what you're currently living in, and go check out the nearest dark sky site to you, because I guarantee you're gonna get a lot nicer astrophotography once you remove all that light pollution. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more astronomy and night photography stuff and just crazy stuff I do with cameras, uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> be sure to subscribe to the channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's all for this video. So um, have a good time and probably check out whatever I have up here. And hopefully not on my face because I've done that by accident once. Thanks for watching.